When I'm not lingering in the past, ruining the past, when I'm not imagining the future, when I am purely with the person who's in front of me, my job is to save them as an improviser. That is, my, I have one job. And guess what? Their job is to save me. And so when that is the norms, and one of the things we talked about earlier that I, I know I wanted to sort of mention this, which is a lot of what we're talking about are, are, are covenants that we make to each other that we should be more explicit about at the beginning of our meetings, at the beginning of our days, at the beginning of our work lives, um, which is, hey, this is, these are the things that we believe. We. This is the, do we all believe these? Let's make sure these are the things we believe. And if so, we have some really good guiding principles. Some people might call them ethics. <laughs> if you don't like that word, you know, call them norms, what, whatever it is. Uh, but but it, with, with us, it's this idea of saving the, the other and, and the other saving us. And what an awesome place to start from. That provides us with a kind of roadmap that it's going to be hard to really like get lost with. Because we kind of we're in this we're in this thing together, um, and and I Irving Yalom is a cognitive scientist, and my friend Scott Barry Kaufman, who I mentioned, he introduced me to him as well, and he's got a great line. He says, "Sooner or later, you have to give up the hope for a better past." This kicked my ass. Yeah, because look, man, bad shit happens, um, and it is really easy to anchor ourselves. In that last, I mean, we look, we all carry imposter syndrome. You know, you can Google me and I look pretty cool. Uh, do I still think about that thing that I said 25 years ago to that person? Yes, I do. And I know you do too. Well, and it's completely out of context as well. Yes. Because, because we have now ruminated yeah. and, and thought about that so much that <laughs> we created a whole story from it the, the, this, this new giant a, a full yes. story a new context mm -hmm. that that makes it usually 20 times worse than it than totally. even the worst that it could have been that, that. <laughs> totally you gotta give yourself a break man you've got you've got to show yourself some grace you know that that's hugely important one of these covenants that I heard you mention on another show that I thought was really fascinating, uh, and I know you speak on stage, we're speaking here in a podcast, Johnny's performed on stage, and of course we've heard about stage fright, but for many in our audience, that could just be presenting on Zoom or presenting in front of the room. And you made this point, this covenant that audience members share that we don't often think about, which is they want you to succeed. They came yeah, to like, the improv show, shocking, not to see right? you bomb. <laughs> <Shocking>. <laughs> they came to the presentation, the TEDx talk, to learn and to be informed or entertained or to engage in emotion. They didn't come with tomatoes waiting to pick you apart. But when you are in that role of being on stage, and I'm using air quotes because it's different for every one of us, you can often, again, get stuck in that head space of, okay, but if I fail or I'm going to fail and this is going to be a failure and that it was a mistake and ruminate on those things, missing the covenant that we all have, which is we want to be fully engaged in conversation. We want to be fully engaged in the team meeting. We want to see the comedian succeed on stage. Yeah. I want to add to that as well. As a musician, <laughs> there are people who do come to see you fail, but they're, they're usually other musicians and they're highly critical and judgmental because of what they have in their own lives that are going on. If you're in improv, the only people that are judging you in that manner is going to be other, other improvisers. Improv absolutely. Yep. Who, who have their own issues that they're working through. Thousand percent. So that again, leans into what AJ is saying. So anyone there who's in bad faith has their own reasons. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, yeah. It says more about that. Yeah, there's bad actors actors everywhere but it but it <laughs> it's it's not it's not, not most folks and yes this this is actually a recent observation i had which, which i sort of surprised myself with which is which is like yeah i don't go to a movie or a play hoping it sucks or like or, or that the actor forgets their lines like i actually don't want that and we tend to be pretty forgiving of people i also don't need you to be incredibly charismatic my friend sunil gupta talks about like we we value conviction over charisma, right? And so if you look at the video, and you can look at this on YouTube of Steve Jobs doing his presentation, uh, launching the iPhone, he's not charismatic. 
He's like, he's not. He's not a great speaker by any sort of like normal standards. But you know what? You can tell he believes what he's saying. And we all see that. We all see that. So you don't have to be incredibly dynamic. You just have to know your stuff and, and believe in it, believe in the thing you're saying. And I think that's one of the things that trips people up too, because they get in that position where they're trying to sell something they don't believe in. Mm -hmm. 